Oh, the squirrel looks dead. That's why you can read. Did you see it? Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kibekani. And I'm Jade. So today we're making a video about the SJT, which is the Situational Judgment Test. And in this video, we're going to give you some tips about how to score 40 plus, what exactly is this exam, who has to take it, how it's used, and some tips along the way about how we found it and how we prepared for it. Okay, so as Kibekani said, the SJT is the Situational Judgment Test. And um, what it is is an aptitude test where you are presented with a series of common or challenging clinical scenarios mm. and you're expected to either rank or combine responses which are in line with how you should respond as according to the GMC core clinical outcomes. So the SJT is taken by all final year medical students in the UK and it makes up 50% of your overall FPAS score, which is your foundation application score. The other 50% comes from your educational score, which is sort of all your exams that you've done um, up to leading up to that point. So in Cambridge, that was all our exams from first year to fifth year. And we'll talk more about that in a separate video. We're making a dedicated FS video coming soon. So now we're at the format of the SJT. So the exam itself is two hours and 20 minutes long and it's formed of 70 questions. Yeah. You will sit the examination either in the December or January of the year that you are applying to the foundation programme. And that's generally determined by your university. So at Cambridge, we sit it in the December sitting, but I know other universities do mm -hmm. it in the January. So it's entirely determined by your university for that yeah. one. The examination is split into two parts. So part one forms around two thirds of the examination. And here you're presented with a clinical scenario and you're asked to rank the appropriateness of five responses, which are mm. independent of each other. And the maximum amount of marks per question in this second part of the exam is 20. Part two of the exam uh, is around one third of the questions. And here you're presented with a clinical scenario and you're asked to select three from 12 responses, yeah. which would be um, effective when used together and there's a maximum number of marks of 12 per question. So now we're just going to move on to talk about the resources uh, that we used. Uh, the first one being the official website which has two examination papers that you can use. Um, it's probably the best resource mm -hmm. out there I would say. Other resources that you can use include uh, guidance from the GMC. They've got a lot of booklets that you can look into that will help you answer some of these questions. So things like the good medical practice, outcomes for graduates, how to use social media, things like that. Some of those themes come up in the SJT, so it'd be useful mm. to just have a skin through yeah, and definitely. have a read. Other resources as well you can have a look into are the SJT monograph, which is quite long, but it's quite detailed in terms of the SJT and what it covers and what they expect pe from people taking it. Mm -hmm. Good medical practice in action, also a good resource. I think you used that one. Yeah, it's little scenarios and it'll kind of give you the option of how should this person respond? Mm. Um, and then it tells you what would happen if you did respond in that way. Books, obviously, there's quite a lot of books out there. So it's about doing a bit of research as to which book you'd prefer. The book we settled on was this one. We liked it because when it gave the answers, the explanations referenced uh, the good medical practice. So we thought that was a good sign uh, from the book that it was consistent with mm -hmm. uh, the guidance we needed to use. Yeah. Some people also do courses, the HTT courses, and they get tutored on how to answer the questions. We didn't really do any. No, I think with the courses, you have to be very careful because aside from the actual official guidance on the website about mm. the nature of the exam and the practice questions, any other resource you use is down to someone's interpretation yeah. of the SJT, what the question scenarios are based on yeah. and how they think you should respond. There have been um, comments before that sometimes even between years, the um, answers to some of the questions can vary a little bit depending on yeah. the panel of people. Obviously, if you have the money and you want to do a course, go for it. But yeah. it's by no means a necessity to score above 40 on the SJT. I mean, the inconsistencies are also can also be found in books, mm -hmm. right? So some books, different editions of the same book will have yeah. different answers, ranking answers in different orders. Mm -hmm. So That was definitely a case with the Oxford Handbook yeah. um, of the SJT. And if you pick one book, it's probably better just stick mm -hmm. to one. Other resources as well are like past medicine, which everyone doing clinical medicine will probably use. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the SJT, we found that the stems of the questions were quite short yeah. compared to what the official papers on the website were. Yeah. So we wanted to use things that were more reflective of the time pressures we'll have in the actual exam. So we didn't really use past medicine in the end. No. So now on to some of our tips uh, for the actual examination. So starting yeah. with the resources, some of this we've already touched on, but it's important just to emphasize because there's a lot of misconceptions about how you should prepare and how you should yeah. approach the SJT. So I think it is important just to, you know, once you've come through it, give advice to other people on it. Yeah, um, absolutely. So as we said before, for the resources, the only official resource that you will find is the two past papers 
which might have increased to three by the next sitting. Yeah. Um, and the guidance and explanation given on the actual official website. Anything else is down to someone else's interpretation of the SJT. And with that, with the two past papers that were available when we did it, we would suggest you use one of the past papers quite early on in your preparation. Yeah. This gives you a good chance to kind of see what it is that you're actually preparing for. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a look at the marks, um, how they would like you to answer particular questions or the reasoning behind it. Mm -hmm. And then I think that puts you in a really good position to know what it is you're aiming to prepare for. Yeah. And also then it gives you a better opportunity to really look at other resources and see how relevant and how helpful you think it would be based on your own, you know, the only official resource you have to compare it with. But I think it's important to only try the one early on. This is because obviously there are only two official ones and you want to have one later on that you can use as a more kind of practice run close at the time. Yeah. And it's also sometimes helpful to redo that first one again, just to see how you do on it compared to the first time. Our final tips for the SJT are about preparation. Mm. Uh, you will hear different things from different people about this, yeah. but for us, we found that it was very helpful to start early and do a little bit often. Yeah. Um, so we would do a few questions each week as I say we did do one of the practice papers quite early on mm -hmm. um, but I think it's really important just to pace yourself so that you don't end up panicking at the end because yeah. the one thing you don't want to do about this exam is panic because exactly. as I said before it's literally about what happens on the day mm -hmm. what you think you should do something else to add about the SJT so whether you do the December or the January sitting mm -hmm. is that you won't find out your score from the exam until you find out your allocation to a deanery yeah. this tends to be an early March um, and we found out which deanery we were in before we found out our SJT scores. Yeah. So depending on how uh, competitive a deanery you've tried to get into, you can sometimes get an idea as to what your score might be. Something else to add about the SJT is that whether you do the December or the January sitting of the examination, mm -hmm. you won't find out your score until you find out your deanery allocation in early March. Yeah. So we found out which deanery we were in with the standard foundation programme applications. We found out the deanery before we found out the SJT score that came out. I think by about nine in the morning whereas allocations came out at around midnight yeah so you have a bit of a gap sometimes and obviously your SJT score can make all the difference with actually ranking jobs that's within true. your deanery that's all of our tips for the SJT mm -hmm. um good luck to everyone who will be sitting this examination yeah it's not as bad as people say I think no it's not that bad no I think when you're actually in the examination like you hear so many stories and obviously the stress of how important the exam and the score can yeah. be but I after about 10 minutes in the exam I found myself really relaxed into it and it was yeah. just like I was doing one of the practice papers. I mean the day before we didn't really stress about it and uh, relax get a good night's sleep and it should be fine. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.